around you and to make that easy for you ladies and gentlemen we present fresh light where we bring fresh newspaper headlines the limelight mondays to saturdays 8 30 a.m to 9 a.m on alia moye tv and radio watch like subscribe and make sure your notification is activated on our youtube channel you can also like and comment on our pages on facebook twitter and instagram at alia moye tv and radio Tuesday morning, we weren't here, and I'm sure it is a lovely morning over there. Uh, this beautiful morning, this fifth day in the month of September 2023. Uh, so, uh, it is a wet Tuesday morning actually from this side. I'm not sure uh, how it is on the other side watching and listening to us this morning. But, uh, you know, we appreciate and we're grateful for the gift of life. Welcome to Fresh Light on Aliamaya TV and Radio. This is where we take you through. A couple of a uh, couple of headlines and stories in our newspapers, and of course keep you updated and abreast of what is happening around us. So uh, this morning I have a couple of newspapers as usual. I have the Vanga newspaper, I have the Disney newspaper, I have the Nation newspaper, and I have the Punch newspaper. This morning, my name is Mudukme Akinyosuye. All right, kick starting. Let's start with. Um, Let's see, let's start with the Nation newspaper and get to see uh, what we have on the front page of the Nation newspaper. All right, from the front page of the Nation newspaper, we have Federal Government uh, TUC strike over subsidy pens not needed now. We have that with Triple Riders uh, that says NLC pushes ahead, Sean's meeting with Minister, wage award plan ready in two weeks. Presidency cautions against mixing labor matters with politics. Uh, you get the details of that on page 28 in the nation newspaper. Also from the front page of the nation, tolling of federal highways to go on, says Umayi. That on page 28 as well in the nation newspaper. Wando acquires NAOC's off-stream oil assets. Page 25 captures the details of that. Sawalu drops five in new nominees list to assembly. Page 30 has the details of that very story. More insight into Tinubu's 100 days in office. Page 3 to 8 and uh, page 32 captures the details of that story. And also from the front page, tri uh, tribunal verdict on poll. Tinubu will be confident with the rider. Court okays live telecast of judgment tomorrow you get that on page 29 in the nation and also oyetola demands report on dilapidated port facility page 25 captures the details of that very story and uh, we also have from the front page it says cbn loan most expensive to service page 26 as the story and president meets defense chiefs page two also uh, captures the details. DSS wants plotters of violence. You get that uh, on page 26 in the uh, 20, 28, I beg your pardon, in the nation newspaper. And also you get to see uh, Sonwolu, Amzat, Ikuforiji, Obanikoro on tra train ride. Uh, the picture of that on the front page of the nation newspaper. And uh, quickly going through a couple of the stories we have in the nation newspaper to give you uh, some of what we have. Let's start with uh, the tolling. A report here from the nation says tolling of federal highways to go on, says Umayi. The tolling of federal highways across the country is to start soon. Works Minister David Umayi hinted yesterday. He said service stations and security patrols will be provided to complement the toll plazas. Speaking during a media briefing in Abuja, the minister lauded the move by Oyo State Governor Sheyimaki Day to collaborate with 
is Lagos and Ugo counterparts, Governors Babajide Sonwolu and Prince Dakpo Abiodun, lights of the dual carriage, Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And the reintroduction of toll gates was mooted under the watch of Mr. Babatu de Fashola's works and now seen minister during the administration of President Mohamed Bukhari. So the government announced identified preferred and reserved bidders for 12 federal highways which were listed for concession under the Highway uh, Development and Management Initiative. The rest of us in the nation newspaper, tolling of federal highways to go on, says Umayi. Uh, away from that story, we also have um, an history being made from the nation. History as Metro Line train takes off in Lagos. Uh, 40 years after it was cancelled by the military, Lagos uh, begin a new journey with the commercial operation of the Blue Line uh, train flagged off by Governor Babajide Sonwulu. Uh, when the Lagos Metro Line rolled out at the Marina train station at 9.07 a.m., it had, it, it, yesterday, it had a store manager, the state number one citizen, Governor Mabajide Olushala uh, Sonwolu, who dressed to fit the part in a sky blue long sleeve shirt, a face cap, and navy blue trouser. It was a duty he gleefully fulfilled. Who wouldn't? Uh, not after the project, I had escaped three of his predecessors, and he is now delivering the project as a worthy uh, gift to the vision of President Bola Hamitinabu, who marked his 100 days in office and it was received by the managing director of the lagos metropolitan area transport authority and mrs abimbola akinajo who started the project and saw it delivered after 17 years of waiting from the nation history as metro line train takes off in lagos and away from lagos state we have those reports from the nation federal government and tuc strike over subsidy pains not needed now with triple riders NLC pushes ahead and Sean's meeting with minister. Wage award plan ready in two weeks. Presidency cautions against mixing labor matters with politics. The plan strike by the Nigeria Labor Congress NLC over the pains caused to Nigerians by petrol sulfur removal is uncalled for, the federal government and trade union congress TUC said yesterday. And the government and its TUC warned that a two-day strike could erode the gains recorded on our cost to securing a greater future for workers and citizens at large. NLC President Joe Ajari on Friday after a National Executive Committee meeting of the Labor Center announced a two-day warning strike to hold today and tomorrow. And the presidency cautioned against mixing labor issues with politics. Federal government and TUC says a strike over subsidy pains not needed now. The nation graces that very story. And okay, let's go to the sports pages of the nation. Uh, we have a story here that says Alan to become EPL best play best paid player. Manchester City are reportedly preparing to open discussions with Erlen uh, Allen over a new contract, which would make him the highest paid player in the Premier League. The 23-year-old has scored 58 goals and registered 10 assists and 59 appearances for Man City since making a high-profile move from Borussia Dortmund in the summer of 2022. And Alan was key to Man City's treble success last season, scoring 52 goals and providing 9 assists in 53 appearances in all competitions. Alan to become EPL best paid player the sport pages of the nation captures also from the sport pages of the nation is paper air kong osime 21 others for sao tome and principe the nigeria football federation and portuguese coach osip santos pesero have reached an agreement for the latter to continue in his role as head coach of a senior men national team of nigeria super eagles uh, as stipulated in the original contract drawn in May 2022, the Portuguese has been under the mandate to lead the Super Eagles to, in the minimum, uh, the semi finals of the 34th African Cup of Nations finals taking place in Cote d'Ivoire in a few months' time. And Pesero has uh, steered the Super Eagles through the qualifiers and to a ticket with a match to spare, including a 10 to 10 nil record international win against the Antomi and Principe in Agadir, Morocco, in June 2022. Erkong, Osime, and 21 others for Sao Tome and Principe. The nation captures that story. And moving away from the nation, let's see 
uh, what we have on the front page of the Punch newspaper. All right, from the front page of the Punch, we have a presidential poll petitions. Military police warn protesters as tribunal delivers verdict on Wednesday. Page two captures that with double riders. On subsidy pains, labor vows to ground economy and begin strike. Page 11 has the details with a rider as well. Representatives summon six MDAs over federal government asset sale. You get it on page 21 in uh, the Punch newspaper. Away from that, 40 years after Bukhari's suspension, Lagos Light Rail begins operation. Page 7 captures uh, the rather cheering uh, story and fulfilling story. Uh, also from the front page of the punch, foreign investors re repatriated $5 billion dividend. Uh, CBN revealing that on page 21 in the punch. Four suspects arrested for torture in trainee internet fraudsters. Four and five, page four and five captures the metro story. Over 1,000 lawmakers appointees get diplomat passports. Page 14 as that very story. And quickly going through. Uh, the punch newspaper let's see a couple of the stories we have uh in the punch newspaper all right we start with uh, the presidential poll petitions and this story says military on military police warn protesters as tribunal delivers verdict wednesday ahead of the delivery of the judgment of the presidential election petition tribunal in abuja on wednesday the military and the police have said they will not condone any unlawful action by troublemakers the Director of Defense Information, Brigadier General Tukor Gustav, warned those who might be planning to cause violence on that day to discard the idea. The Tribunal, in a statement on Monday, announced it would, on Wednesday, deliver judgment on the petitions challenging the declaration of Bola Tinubu as the winner of the 2023 presidential election by the Independent National Electoral Commission. And the Chairman of the INEC, Professor Mamadi Yakubu, had on March 1 declared Tinubu the presidential elect because his party scored the majority of vote cast in the poll. On presidential poll petitions, military police want protesters as a tribunal delivers verdict on Wednesday. Away from that, from the punch, we also have a subsidy pains. Labor vows to ground economy begin strike. The Nigeria Labour Congress has vowed to ground the economy. As it uh, says, the stage is set for a two-day nationwide warning strike in response to the severe economic hardships plaguing the nation on the aftermath of subsidy removals by the federal government. And this move has garnered widespread support from key stakeholders, including the banking sector, the civil society organizations, and workers' unions, as they unite to address the growing economic crisis in the country. The National Union of Banks, Insurance and Financial Institutions, Employees, uh, the Umbrella Organization representing workers in the banking and insurance industry on Monday vowed to take part in the strike, effectively shutting down financial activities across Nigeria. Subsidy pens, labor vows to ground economy and begin strike. The Punch newspaper captures that story. And we have a statement credited to but a judge saying judiciary shouldn't determine election winners former deputy national chairman of the people's democratic party chief olabode judge has raised concern over the role of the judiciary in determining election winners in nigeria and this is as he advised the judiciary against taking away the rights of a people to determine poll winners he raised the concern at a press briefing held in his office in Ikoi on Monday following the announcement by the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal in Abuja that it would deliver its judgment on Wednesday. The tribunal, in a statement on Monday, announced it would on Wednesday deliver judgment on the petitions challenging the declaration of Bola Tinubu as the winner of the 2020 city presidential election by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Judiciary shouldn't determine election winners, says Bode Judge from the Punch newspaper. Away from that, we also have um, a story from the Punch. Federal government to include families of injured and fallen soldiers in social register. The federal government has unveiled plans to include families of wounded and fallen soldiers in the National Social Register and its poverty elevation programs. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, 
Dr. Beta uh, Edu made a known during a meeting with the Chief of Defence Staff General Christopher Misa on Monday in Abuja. Edu expressed the need to support families of deceased soldiers. Federal government to include families of injured and fallen soldiers in social register. The punch punches that house. And uh, also from the punch, we have Loma wants residents against illegal waste collectors. The Lagos State Waste Management Authority has warned against the patronage of illegal waste collectors in the state. The agency is Director of Public Affairs for Lashade Kaderi in an interview with Met, uh, Punch Metro on Sunday warned against cat pushers, stating that they are not authorized uh, waste collectors in Lagos State. And Kaderi was reacting to a report that residents of a Muslim area of the state expressed concern over the conversion of the Idiaraba Canal. Uh, to an illegal dump site. From the punch, Loma warns residents against illegal waste collectors. From the punch. And uh, also taking this uh, from the punch, Makodi 12 hour downpour leaves state capital flooded. Uh, so a trip away from Lagos to Makodi. Residents of Makodi Benue state capital on Monday witnessed flooding following a downpour that lasted almost 12 hours. Punch Metro gathered that the rain, which began with a uh, light shower around 10 p.m. on Sunday, increased intensity uh, around 4 a.m. on Monday and lasted till around 10 a.m. And these, it was, it was lent, resulted in floods in areas m such as uh, Wurunkum, Achusa, and some parts of Boko Road. It was uh, further gathered that students of the Joseph uh, Sawan Tarka University, formerly Federal University of Agriculture, Makodi, were stranded in the early hours of Monday as they could not access the road leading to the university campus. That story from the Metro pages of the Punch, Makodi, 12-hour downpour leaves state capital flooded. And uh, we'll quickly go on the short break, uh, commercial break, and we'll be back for more headlines and fresh lights on Aliyamoye TV and radio. Stay with us. <music> Thousands have been disappointed severely in their bid to see greener pasture abroad. To those quack in the traveling agency business, it is a rocket science. That is not our case at Tau Staff Travels and Talk. We have in-depth details on how to successfully, without stress, help you process and secure your visa to anywhere in the world. Do you want permanent residential visa, visiting and tourism visa, student visa to places like Europe, America, Asia, Africa? It's no big deal to us at Tau Staff Travels and Talk. Our years of experience and expertise speaks volumes for us let's process and secure visa for you to uk usa and canada within a twinkle of an eye we offer Aj and umura services to our muslim faithfuls what are you waiting for consult us at number nine house of central mosque shalanka street behind laroy hotel abiola way abiola 0802 0900 or 0806 578 4060. Stop wasting money. Pay for peace of mind. Talk to Tausaf Travels and Bugwa la fe tu bayi, to fe go shoyi, shoge tu pagba mu, nun ko jalosi, House of Ziyana. House of Ziyana, the name I know, when we talk of top-notch fashion, quality materials and class. House of Ziyana, let him a rojulo wo toki wies, Egypt and Malaysia clothing, Dubai, I want designer bags, no rishi rishi, I want itele bata, so jinoti won fawo original shi, I want go kajo, ton kawakati yojo, designer sunglasses and perfumes, but ru a won go boom kan, so bi rea se kofi, ba fe lo ba, ha ha, Debe, ojo me nse kami 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 emi ni ora emi ni omu gbogbo eyin musulumi elesin te gboge gbon pa fashion te wa ni lo jalabia ijab ati abaya lori sirisi house of ziyana le o ti ri gbogbo era house of ziyana wa ni 52 olorun shogoro aja saint redeem church agape parish olorun shogo abe okuta lori instagram house of ziyana 08165688618 house of ziyana ile itaja ta tin toju lo wa so ati nkan asara loge tin gbe ni ni
you're still on to Fresh Line to Naliyamu TV and Radio. Thank you so much for always trusting uh, this frequency and still going through some of the headlines uh, we have in our newspapers. So we pick up the this day newspaper to see what we have on the front page of the this day newspaper. Uh, from the front page, Sanusi says, Al Bukhari mismanaged Nigeria's economy in eight years. But the writer says, inexperienced to rookie bought private jet under ex-president. You get that on page 24 in the this day. And also, 2023 budget, federal government post 4.6 trillion naira half year revenue. Page 5 captures that story. And also from the front page, Owando set to take over Agib's oil, gas, and power assets in Nigeria with double riders that says deal awaits reg uh, regulatory approval and it to focus on offshore business in Nigeria. Page 24 captures the business story. Away from that, we also have the subsidy. NLC Sean's federal government peace talks insist on strike. Page 26 graces that story. Also from the front page, Tribunal delivers judgment in Artiku obese petitions against Dinobu tomorrow. Page 24 has the details of that uh, very story. And of course, you get to see uh, the picture of the Kwara State Governor, Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, uh, inaugurating Mr. Ayo, Ayo Wade Peter Kayode, a visually impaired civil servant, as a permanent secretary for the Ministry of Social Development at the ceremony. Uh, to swear in cabinet members and new permanent secretaries in a lorry yesterday on inclusive governance. Uh, quickly going through the D's Dennis paper, let's see a couple of the stories we have uh, from the D's Dennis paper. I will start from the tribunal uh, petitions. Tribunal delivers judgment in Artiku obese petition against Dinabu on Wednesday, one month and four days after its concluded hearing in two separate petitions filed by presidential candidates of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, al Haji Atiku Abubakar, and that of the Labour Party, Mr. Pitabi, challenging the declaration of Senator Bola Tinubu as president, the presidential election petition court, the presidential election petition tribunal will on Wednesday deliver its judgment. And this was confirmed on Monday morning by the Chief Registrar of the Court of Appeal, Mr. Omar Bangari, although he noted that a statement to that effect would soon be issued to journalists. Tribunal delivers judgment in Atiku Obi's petition against Tinubu Wednesday from the this day. Away from that, we also have from the this day, Obasajo and Sanusi says, how Bukhari mismanaged Nigeria's economy in eight years with uh, double riders. Ex-president says, I knew Bukhari didn't understand economics, but didn't know he was so reckless. Sanusi says inexperienced rookie bought private jet under ex-president. A former president, Chief Olusha Gumabasajo, and a former Emir of Kano, Mohamed Sanusi, have hinted that former President Mohamed Bukhari destroyed the Nigerian economy in eight years that he administered the country. Now, speaking in an interview with the cable, Obasajo said, and I quote, Tidubu said the other day that it was unacceptable that he would spend 90% of revenue to service debt. I wasn't spending 90% when I went worldwide to get debt relief. Do you think that anybody would give you debt relief today? If Buhari was spending money recklessly. I know Buhari didn't understand economics. I put that in my book. But that it could also be so, uh, that it could also be so reckless. I didn't know who would you go to today and ask for a favor. And on his part, Sanusi insisted that Buhari failed to listen to expert advice. Sanusi, a former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, was speaking during a virtual religious event on Sunday. And Sanusi said the Buhari administration ignored his advice on how to take Nigeria out of its economic woes. You will get the rest of what the former president, Obasanjo and Sanusi, had to say in the this day. Al Buhari mismanaged Nigeria's economy in eight years. Away from that, also from the this day newspaper, we have... Uh, House Committee ails NSIA's healthcare fertilizer and road infrastructure interventions with rider authority highlight ongoing aggressive expansion plan. The ADOC committee, constituted by the House of Representatives to investigate uh, the activities of the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authorities since the inception of the authority, has ailed the management of the NSIA over their intervention in the healthcare sector 
uh, fertilizer and infrastructure development. And the members of the committee commended the NSIA during an oversight visit at the NSIA Luth Cancer Center uh, and other interventions by the authority in Lagos yesterday. House Committee Ails NSIA's Healthcare and Fertilizer Road Infrastructure Interventions from the this day newspaper. And uh, also from the this day, Sinobu pledges to digital digitalize public service with cutting edge technology uh, with double riders, expresses concern over Nigeria's bloated civil service payroll, promises to surgically apply public funds for na nation's growth. President Bola Tinubu has expressed his support for new pa uh, partnership with global technology companies to ensure that data from public institutions are accurate and transparent. And this, he said, would provide templates on which proper public sector planning and accounting could uh, occur across sectors. From the this day, Tinubu pledges to digitalize public service with cutting-edge technology. And uh, quickly uh, picking up my last newspaper this morning, but not the least, of course, uh, that will be the Vanguard newspaper. From the front page of the Vanguard, NLC Sean's meeting with federal government starts two-day warning strike. That is coming with several writers, uh, but page five captures the story. A presidential poll, Tinubu Atiku will be no fate tomorrow. Uh, we will have that on page eight in the Vanguard newspaper. Strike and presidential poll verdict. DSS raises alarm over violent protests. Page 9 captures the details of that. Bola Tinubu, a president in need of help. Page 11, and, uh, 11 to 13 has the details of that uh, very story. And also from the front page of the, uh, the Vanguard, Abbas Ojos San Lucy blasts Bukhari over reckless spending. Uh, that's also resurfacing on the front page. And 27, page 27 captures the detail. Why Tinubu appointed Baja, chief of staff, sources revealing that you get a reason on page 25 in uh, the Vanga newspaper. A sports headline on the front page also reveals Leverkusen celebrates Boniface Supaigo's call up. You have that on page 31 in the Vanga newspaper. And also, you get to see the pictures on the Lagos Blue Rail line uh, kicking off, uh, the picture of Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, uh, and also uh, tapping with his uh, Kauri card to board the first commercial train trip on the Blue Line Rail with his deputy, Dr. Obafemi Hamzad, uh, behind him as APC Lagos Chairman Cornelius Ojelabi at the Marina Station yesterday. And uh, also you get to see the ministerial tour of Nigerian ports, the picture of that on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. Quickly perusing the pages of the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, let's start with this uh, very story. Okay, let's start with the story from the Vanguard. And this report right here says, okay, we already have that. That's on the presidential poll that will be a ticket to no fate as tribunal delivers verdicts tomorrow. Uh, that's uh, been taken. Also, we have that so facing in other newspaper. And uh, okay, we also have the story from the Vanguard. Arawa youth stage protests and urge federal government to renew Tompolo's pipeline surveillance contract. Members of the Northern Youth Advocacy for Good Governance Initiative at the Arawa Youth Forum on Monday staged a protest at the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited headquarters in Abuja. Uh, they demanded that the federal government not renew a pipeline surveillance contract awarded to Tantita Security, owned by Mr. Uh, Mr. Government Epe Mupolo, also known as Tompolo. And defying the presence of security operatives, the protesters called on President Ahmed Bola Tinubu to reconsider renewing the contract, citing rampant financial malfeasance associated with it. And placards held aloft by uh, protesters bore inscriptions such as Tompolo's pipeline surveillance is a fraud. President Tinubu, please save Nigeria from these jackals and suspend and probe NMPC menchmen. The rest of us in the Vanga newspaper. How do I use stage protests? Urge federal government not to renew Tompolo's pipeline surveillance contract. And uh, also, we have a report right here from the Vanga. We won't condone attacks on Muslims, Ogun, League of Imams and Afars, revealing that. The League of Imams and Afars in Ogun State yesterday warned that it will not condone infringement 
on the rights of Muslims to perform their spiritual obligations by suspected traditionalists. The Imams and Afaz, who spoke in a bill to the Egba Central Mosque uh, Committee, includes the President General of the League of Imams and Afaz in the state, uh, Sheikh Sikri Lai Babalala, Grand Chief Imam of Ijebuland, uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak Ayobadejo, Grand Chief Imam of Egba Land, Sheikh Asad. Uh, Sahadala Bamibola and Grand Chief Imam of Remoland, Sheikh Abdul Qadri Jinodu. You have the rest of us in the vanguard. We would condone attacks on Muslims, Ogun League of Imams, and our first, uh, re revealing that very story from the vanguard. And uh, also from the vanguard, we have a story right here that says Tinubu studying G20 invitation didn't apply to join BRICS, says presidency. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Ajuri Ingelali, has admitted that President Bola Tinubu has received an invitation to join the G20 and currently considering the membership benefits of a gathering of the world's largest economies. And this was even as the presidential spokesman debunked viral reports making the round on social media and online, and online platforms that Nigeria has already joined the G20 and BRICS, another group of major emerging economies that comprised Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and Galali made a uh, rebuttal when the he featured on Channel Television's Politics Today yesterday. A statement is coming in the wake of a report that the president will jet out of Nigeria on Monday night to attend the G20 summit in New Delhi in India. Tinubu studying G20 invitation didn't apply to join BRICS, says president. They're running it up with this very story. Uh, sports story from the vanguard red hot boniface nominated for bundesliga rookie of the month nigerian striker victor boniface has been nominated for the bundesliga rookie award for the month of august the bayern leverkusen hot uh, shot was nominated alongside leipzig uh, zavi simon and the freiburg's noha Atub uh, atubolu who is also a nigerian born uh, goalkeeper and Boniface has been superb for Bayern Leverkusen after he joined from Belgian Pro League Union uh, St. Gilois uh, in this summer. The 22-year-old has scored two goals and provided one assist in two outings for Bayern Leverkusen in this month of August. And Boniface recently got a call-up to the Super Eagles ahead of their 2023 AFCON qualifier clash against Sao Tome and Principe. Red Hot Boniface nominated for Bundesliga Rookie of the Month. The Vanguard captures that very story. And on, from the sports story uh, from the Vanguard, we take a bow and draw the curtain on Fresh Line this morning on Ali Amuye TV and Radio. Do not forget to follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ali Amuye TV and Radio. Also, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the alarm button to get updated and get notification of our programs and also the, uh, you can always uh, we can definitely do you the grace and honor to advertise any of your products or service that you offer we do that on Aliyamoye TV and radio uh, definitely uh, we want you to uh, succeed in whatever you do I remember good morning <music>